in our house. Yeah, do you share budgeting? Well, I'm a big thing, but generally. Actually, close that door so the air, yeah. the noise was looking up for that. So do we want the door closed? And that one too? Oh, well, Thank you, Just Lenny. the noises from this. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's much better. I keep wondering what class we're doing. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I am calling a meeting of the Shoot Ferry Select Board to order. It's July 21st, 2022. And um, the sole item on this evening's agenda is um, an interview with Lenny Serwanka, um, who has applied to be the Shoot Ferry Fire Chief. And this is um, a second interview. We had an interview last week, the week before, um, with a larger. July 7th. July 7th. Okay. So two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Two weeks ago. Um, with a larger group, and um, uh, we thought it would be good to have a follow-up just with just a select board to um, uh, to get some more questions answered, so we can kind of move ahead with this process. So I'm going to lead off. Um, okay. I think uh, you know what I'd like to hear from you is now that you've had a couple of weeks to reflect on um, the the interview that you had, granted it was a large group of people and a lot of questions and um, uh, had a chance to reflect on, on what we talked about at that interview. Um, is there anything that you would like to, things that you've thought about that you'd like to share with the select board, either about your interest in the position and so forth? Well, we'll leave it pretty wide open for you. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish uh, we had some way to get more people on the department, come up with new ideas. I think not many, there's not many people on the department. Most people, most people work at the department. I don't think that can hear you. Yeah, you might need to project. And you might want to turn that off. The button, the little add button. Linda, is that better? You're great. Okay, so yeah. So yes, Sorry. there's not many people on the department. Most people work out of town. So depending on the circumstance, you know, we might not have people available when there's a call. And I think there was some questions about how to how to increase the, the membership of the like so, the department, and do you want to talk a little bit about how I, we might go about that? Honestly, any idea? Are there, um, are there um, resources that you might be able to tap? Other, I don't know, chief organizations that might help? I don't know. That's that's what, um, that was my concern with the, to, to the town that I would think it would be in the town's interest to have more people on. So. I think when we were speaking at one point, um, you said that when you talk to people about joining the department, that for some people, it's their, what, what they're paid we, could be an issue that we look at. Because yep. most people that are you know, working on you know, like a physical job or getting paid higher. And we suggest that that's one area we can look at. Yep. I think there were a couple others. One was um, when we were talking about recruiting women, um, we said, go talk to them. Yes, we've had females on on and off since you know, since I've been on. And I think possibly maybe somebody else in the town could talk to them and see what their experience would be and how to go about recruiting females. 50% of the population would be a good target market. Yeah, we think so, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, 
um, Lenny, we talked some at the last um, interview about your current position and working, kind of what your vision is for the it, as a fire chief. And yep. um, I don't know whether or not you've had an opportunity to talk to your current employer. And so I was thinking in terms of like, what, what would you see your work week look like as fire chief and when um, if offered the position, when would you envision starting? Um, I'm not too sure exactly when I could start, depending on a couple jobs. Um, I would have to talk to talk it over with my employer to see what's, uh, what works best for them. Also, depending on what you guys are going to offer me, whether it's a schedule similar like a Walters or what. I'm not too sure. So that would. What schedule would you want? If you could pick up your schedule. I would like to pick something like what Walter had. So four ten hour days. Yep. So. I definitely do. You having trouble hearing? I didn't hear what Becky said. Four ten hour days. Oh, thank you. So you would, do you have an idea of what days per week you might want to do? Might as well do the same, Monday through Thursday. And then the off days, you'd sort of be on call, like if something happened, or yes, yeah, uh, we could be around. Yeah. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit before about, um, handling strong personalities and, and people within the, the fire department and your kind of leadership style. Yeah. Um, I know you've had at least, you know, one, one call since that, that left in the last two weeks. And I was um, interested in hearing about kind of your approach that day when that involved both the police and the, and the fire department. Which I was thinking about the smoke where there was the question about the smoke in the area. Yeah. Yes. Um, we were called down to Crack Corner Road for small smoke in the area. And we walked around with a homeowner on the radio. I heard several other things about a large brush fire out of control in Granby and it's possibly going into multiple areas. And then we had multiple calls of smell of smoke on Montague Road and uh, Wendell Road. And I had people go in different directions to see if they could smell anything. And we didn't find anything. About an hour and a half later, we went back to the station. And do you do any kind of debrief after an incident like that amongst the firefighters or? Sometimes, yeah. Um, sometimes we talk about what worked what worked good, what didn't work good, what should we have done differently. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can hear what happens on other calls. When you're in the truck, you're listening to other calls. And, you know, we were listening to other towns doing the same smell of smoke in the area for them. So. Um. <laughs> at that particular call, um, how many of you, of you showed up at that particular call? We had uh, four, five, five firefighters. So that was a pretty good. That was in the afternoon, right? Yes, yeah. that was. was I'm not too sure on the time. It was in the later afternoon. That's what I remember. I'd have to look at the look at the times. Mm -hmm. So, and how did you um, delegate who went where at that in that particular? Well, first we were going to respond to Crack Corner Road, and then we had a call for on Wendell Wendell Road. So I had dispatch tell the brush truck because that was leaving second to go to Wendell Road, and then they didn't smell, they didn't find anything, and they called to me, and I asked them to come down Sand Hill Road. Because there's small smoke in the area there. So, and then we met up on Sand Hill and Crack Corner Road and made a plan to go 
go different directions. So, um, Lenny, does the, does the fire department currently have any sort of like policies and procedures, like guidelines? If, if somebody came on as a new firefighter, or even with existing firefighters, is there uh, any kind of manual? I assume there's training, yep. a training manual, but how about other policies and procedures of the um, we, we go over what we do for car crashes, what we do for different types of fire calls, what type of mutual aid we call for one, one type of caller or for another. Typically, if it's a chimney fire, we'll have either lever automatically pump for mutual aid. If it's an actual working structure fire, we call for a second or third alarm. We would have multiple pounds show up automatically. If it's a, uh, say it's a motor vehicle crash, we will respond to the rescue with the first available personnel and then we fire the engine for the next crew. So, and is that documented somewhere, kind of what the, what those procedures are? Like, is it written down? Like, this is how this is sort of... No, we don't. Um, not particular. Would you see that as something that would be useful to have? Yeah, it could be useful. Um, we try to go over lots of things and hopefully when somebody's on for several years, they start to get that type of stuff, information. Uh, most important is communication too. Uh, so sometimes you might want to roll with an engine and then you hear otherwise, and here you're supposed to roll with something else. So if you just go by the guidelines and then disregard other information you have, mm -hmm. it kind of goes up and, you know. They're only as good as they're well. only, yeah. <laughs> and so, the situation allows, right? Yes. But there's some sort of basic procedures that probably, or, you know, going into somebody's home is sort of what what happens. Yeah. When, you know, what, what you call, for instance, like COVID precautions. So what does the fire department currently do with regard to that? So if it's a known COVID case, we typically only go in the house with one person dressed in a Tyvek suit mm -hmm. and do patient care until the ambulance shows up. On other medical calls, we try to limit, the, limit it to two people in the house with masks. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what we've been doing for medical calls and COVID calls. So there is policy. There is policy. I think they have right. Yeah, um, we have a different jump bag uh, kit for COVID. So there's basically essentially less stuff to clean up with a fall. You know, if we go in with everything off the truck, that means we have to clean everything. So if we go in with just a limited number of things and a bat and a smaller jump bag, there's less of a, less stuff to clean. Mm -hmm. at, at, a, at a call or a uh, moment where services are needed, is the chief the person that makes some of those determining calls of what vehicle goes out and such? Or is it the, the people that arrive at the station? Say the chief that is there. Okay, so it's typically the first senior person on the station will make the call. It's pretty much known a fire, a uh, motor vehicle crash, the rescue would leave first. And it's also known that the engine will fall up. So it's the rescue is more important because it's they have all our medical gear on there. And the second vehicle would be the engine in case there's a car, in case the car catches on fire, or we can use a vehicle at the uh, the engine as a uh, um, traffic control and also manpower. If you need, say, if it's an entrapment, you need multiple people for an entrapment call. So on a different tip, um, one thing that came up before uh, the last meeting was diversity training. And like Chris, for example, saying that um, she could do help do that, the police chief could help do that. Is that something you'd be interested in doing? Is that the good plan, do you think? So? Seems fine to me. Yeah. yeah. And that might actually help with that problem, like, you know, we can find people who are involved in that in the fire department, you know, who are members of the fire department. So, yeah, it could. Do you foresee that being maybe a, 
special training session or maybe one of your weekly training sessions? How might you fit that in the schedule? Uh, most likely it'd have to be one of the weekly training sessions we want to go over. Uh, I'll talk to the police chief about it. Um, Lenny, can you talk about uh, how you would handle a situation where there was a, a resident made a complaint about um, one of the uh, officers, you know, from the fire, fire one of the firefighters having either responded to an incident, come into their home, that sort of thing. Well, I'll have to get the information for what was what was said from the see the complaint and I'll also have to talk to talk to other individuals that were there and also to see what happened with the uh, and talk to the individual who allegedly did it and go from there. Um, Might that be a situation where having policies and procedures on how to handle complaints would be useful? Yeah, I think so. Another different uh, sort of position. What, what um, Walt did a lot of mechanical work. What's your sense of how much of the mechanical work you could do in house? Um, I think I could do most of the stuff that Walter did, minus the radios. So all the actual engines and stuff. Yeah, like that. I feel pretty confident about fixing valves and uh, working on some of the engines. And is there training available for the radios? That I mean, those we have new radios. Yeah, right? I, I believe if yeah. I remember because we're going to one of those, or went to a couple of those meetings. Looks like we're going to with all of the yeah. fire and everything. I believe there was some training, either sessions online or there was a book. I can't remember which. That was the book. Yeah, and there are also vendors. There's vendor support yeah. for the moment. Oh, there are. Okay, yeah. For the new set. Yeah. So I would think modern, I don't know, but I would think modern radio is one of those things where let them fix it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I think many times that's the case. Yeah, I think so. Really. Um, yeah. yeah. Good job at component of electronic components. So Lenny, one of the things Linda, she said you had to select out an electronic component okay. on the new radio stand. <laughs> um, one of the things you you talked about that was um, uh, not a particular strength of yours was speaking publicly, and yeah. um, you know you will be asked to do uh, to come before the select board. To you know, report to us um, when we have all boards meetings. You know, we have all department heads come and kind of do a brief presentation. We haven't been doing the all boards meetings for a while, but I expect and I hope we will be doing those. Um, is there anything that would help you develop sort of more confidence, or you know, is there something that you would want to do? During your, I think it's just something that I'm just gonna have to do and deal with, and hopefully I get better over time. It, yeah, I mean it's, it's, one, to do it's better. one of the things I've never really done mm -hmm. too. So, and can you talk a little bit about the um, the logs and how that how that would you know I know I remember you saying well we have the log sheet. And there's a pile of them at the fire station. Is that something you envision? I mean, stuff gets reported to the state, right? Yeah. But there's no kind of reporting to the select board. So how, how would you undertake that? Um, so when we have a call, we have to file a report. And I'm not sure how it's done, but it does, after that report gets filed, gets made, it also goes to the state system online. So you're actually you're you're entering it. Yeah, it has to be entered entered in, and uh, I don't know how to do that right now. So that gets entered in, but there's no other system right now. Like, does that generate a report? Could you generate a? Oh, you don't know probably. If you can generate a report from what was submitted to the state. Um. 
if it's a medical call, we can't release medical information. It so would have 60, to be standby. So, so 60 percent roughly is a medical call, mm -hmm. medical calls we do. Yeah. So right off the bat, we do in a way need to get a lawyer to, to be able to see what's on that it's, on that report. What, what I remember you? Walter used to give them to us, but they were very sanitized. Like they were basically this date medical call and this time for the medical ones. I don't think we had more than that. The fires we ended up with a, a little more of a location. Um, I think um, he says what they were time. posting on Facebook for a while. And we're posting all of the all the calls, all of the activity. The calls were getting put, but some of them weren't uh, sufficiently okay. redacted. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I kind of flagged that for them. And then um, Mark, I think Mark was working on that uh, social media effort. And so he was went back and tried to do a better job of that. But I don't know if that's been happening during COVID or not. I don't go into yes. it. Yeah, I don't think we've been doing it for a while. I know some departments, they might post, this is what we've done this week. We've done two motor vehicle calls, two smell of smoke in the area calls, and four medical calls. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know some departments still actually post that. Yeah. Um, well, not, like I said, some, not, not very many people. Right. departments will do that. But it's pretty general of one automobile car. It doesn't say, it happened at this address right. at this time. So the police so, laws tend to they they have very detailed information yeah. typically. Such as the fire it's, you, you can't do it with any any sort of medical call, right? You can't identify address or I don't think it's good practice to I think you know I think HIPAA yeah. takes over yeah. 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 So HIPAA regulations. Um What about the emergency management position of the fire chief? If you could just sort of slash emergency management, what's your sense of doing that? And whether or not, how you would do that, reducing incremental weakness in that area? Well, something I've never learned, something I've never really, I've never covered it. Right. So I'm going to have to learn how to do it first. I mean, I don't really know how what it really entails, really entails. So I can't really give you a straight answer on it, but then I'll work on it. I don't know about the director position, but you have a team of us, um, yeah. the board of health, the select board, the town administrator, um, Tim, or the growth person, who we'll yeah. it the time. So we would meet once a month. Um, and Walter ran one of the meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Walter ran the next meeting. But there is some kind of training you have to do anyway, or ICS yes. training. Yeah, there, I know it's their ICS training, like the 400. And like I said, I have to take the courses. And that would be something I would have to work on. Right. Okay. And, and about suggestion I have brought forward, Eric, was um, the deputy emergency management director is the police chief. And that maybe if Walter's been trained, we can just switch roles. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. Well, it's hard uh, to tell what a mask on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as he's developing more knowledge on the subject matter and going to meetings then um, they would work together and uh, That's a good idea. the police chief could be in the lead position and she was open to doing that. And then just That's a good idea. Good plan. Um, so Lenny, I want to get back to um, the first question that we asked you the, the last time about why you wanted to be the fire chief. And I was wondering if there was anything beyond I, I think uh, I think I can serve the town well. I think the department will benefit from me, um, from from me being chief. Uh, I think I offer different skills than what you could possibly get from another chief. I'm familiar with all the equipment. I live in town, so I'll be I'll be making most fire calls. Um, that's, yeah. Um, well liked by the firefighters. And you think if if, if somebody stepped out of line, you can you can address that. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. So uh, how would you handle how do you handle a stressful situation being a firefighter and a chief is stressful? How do you handle stress personally? Uh, 
I try not to get too worked up about it. I will try not to get too worked up on a scene and try to break things down into small, small tasks. And also make sure this is something we can handle or do we have to call for help? So you're willing to bring in resources when you need. Yeah. And how many, um, were there many times when Walter, were there times when Walter was not available when you were, say, the first on the, on the scene? Or yeah. was that unusual? Yeah. Oh, Walter made a lot of calls. So there wasn't too many times that I was the officer in charge or in charge of the scene. Yeah. Um, I, it's, you know, it is what it is. Because um, he was in town. Too. He was in town, right. yeah. So, yeah, uh, if he wasn't around, we figured it out. You covered when you bring Walter with the right. You did a lot of that in the open Yeah. Yeah. And in those situations, were you often the first person or one of the people on the team going out to the point? Yeah. In, the, in my work experience, we always ended on a fun note in an interview. <laughs> so I'll ask the question this person asked to everybody in admissions Who's your favorite Beatle from the Beatles? Oh. <laughs> You're too young. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, so much. <laughs> Do you have one? Not really. <laughs> That's a good diplomatic answer. Yeah, That's a good yeah. Answer. yeah, very good. Answer. <laughs> um, I think he can handle the politics. <laughs> okay, so I um, I'm trying to recall what we put on the agenda if we were doing um, if there was a discussion now amongst the select board members. Yeah. Um, just about what, yeah. We, yeah. what we do. Okay. Thank you. All right. But I, I thought so. Um, so you're welcome to. Say to that, or um, uh, I think if well, I guess the last thing maybe I want to ask is, do you have any questions about now that you yeah now but that you had two opportunities? So. I'm sure there's going to be slews of questions at some point in the future if I'm chief. Because there's a lot of stuff that Walter knows that I don't that I don't, so I can't really. Can't really ask a question until the situation arises. Mm -hmm. Oh, about the um, you know just the, the hiring process or or being a town employee or anything uh, kind of administrative. Oh, um, are you fully aware of sort of what the just assuming the works. benefit taxes? Yeah, I'd have to, well, I'm not really too sure on what they are. I mean, if I'm too old to be vested or not. I don't know. So. I don't think so. Well, I'm not the good person. I yeah. answer because I'm not a dad. Um, but I think so. takes 10 years yeah. for retirement. Okay. So if you were to say um, 10 years, that, that means, you know, if you said uh, 10 years, you would have, you're within the retirement program. Yeah. Um, does, it, does it also count if I've been a member since 2005? That will come that in some sometime? way. I'm not 100% sure how much credit you will get. The retirement okay. board will accept with that. I know they worked it through on Walter's, yeah. you know, multi decade career. So okay. that we can ask the retirement board um, for the status of the work you've already put in. Yeah. And I know firefighters, uh, they, you get a higher percentage. Fire and police get a higher percentage on the retirement than non-safety personnel. Yeah. yeah. Percentage of percentage of so what the ma maximum, yeah. Yes. Maximum percentage. Yeah. Like a person putting like a police chief who put in 10 years will kind of get double what you know they'll get the same as somebody else who put in 20 years. Okay. But we can go, I can get you those specifics. Okay. And the general benefits are health insurance, vacation, and time. 
Should we wait for that background check? No, I can't believe it's a problem, frankly, but should we wait for that to happen? Yeah, typically, you make it contingent upon okay. because it's, you know, and if there's any red flags that come up and it's unstable, you need to run the ball to both parties. But typically, you just would offer the offer the job. <laughs> Linda can't hear you. <laughs> You're here. It's really hard. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Linda. I I took my mask off and then I got nervous again. Um, so I was just saying, typically um, the process would be to, to to put the job offer out contingent upon the results of the background check and the the, negoti the negotiation. Thank you. How long will it, How long does that take? Background check. I guess that's just a question for the person. She's supposed to. Know. How long will the background check take? Kristen, can you hear us? I can, yes. How long does the background check take? Um, I suppose that's going to be, uh, it, it will matter how much um, information we have and how far back we have to go. I can imagine that it would be maybe two weeks tops. Does that feel good to everybody else? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, we could. There's a good possibility, possibility it could be by the time of the next select board meeting. Hey, Becky, if you talk forward to the mic. August, it's likely we could complete by August 16th. Yeah, really. And if it's done by the second, then we'll discuss it. So it would be an appointment contingent upon background check and successful contract negotiation. Contract negotiation would be done in executive session. That um, it can be, yeah, yeah, and then the product comes out of executive session. Okay. And that could be done at the same meeting, you know, either on the second or the sixteenth. It wouldn't be the second. I mean, I right. won't be here. That's right. Okay. But the, with the negotiation team would be one, one of each one of those. Yeah, who is the negotiating team? Like, well, that's where, where we can do it that way. Okay. And the second possibility is the select board can negotiate. Oh. Or it could be like one select board member and the town administrator. You have options of Okay, so I will entertain a motion if somebody wants to make one. I will make a motion. We appoint Tony Zanaka to the chief of the fire department, contingent on background check and successful contract negotiation. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those 
in favor signify by saying aye. Thank you, Daniel. Stacker, aye. Carol, aye. So we made one step. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, congratulations. As long as you haven't burned anybody, I still have to ask me to. Right. Um, so we, you know, as, as Becky just noted, um, we would be looking to the select board meeting on August 16th. Um, so that just gives you, that would give um, Kristen time to do the background check and then. Um, you know, we could go into the contract, but assuming everything is, is clear and we can move forward to go into the contract negotiation. So that just gives you a sense of, of timing with your current employer, because we'll be looking, you know, obviously for, among other things, um, for a start date. Okay, so August 16th would be the next time on meeting? That, that would be the- That's the next select board meeting, yeah. Well, it's not the next one, but oh, yeah, the one yeah. where right. we have the whole finalized, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Make a mental note of August 16th. Yeah, go for that. Feel like me, you're ready to have your phone too. Don't be texting. Yeah, mental note, not get anywhere. Okay, any other business that we need to conduct tonight, Becky? Um, just we got this uh, out of Mega Warren. That is, we, we already voted the. There's close out documents so you can they can sign that they were voted at the last meeting. Okay. And then if you would approve the vendor warrant um, brought forward today, July 21st, it has three um, requests for payment in it. The main reason for doing it is we were afraid we would miss the two and a half percent discount on our health on our. Maya insurance, our liability, car insurance, and workers' comp, which would have been a loss of over twelve hundred dollars. So, um, Gail, if you can move ahead on that, and then we have the CARES payback of the thirty-six hundred dollars is in there, as well as um, the per cost payments that were outstanding for FY twenty two. Okay. So we will get those signed right now. It's okay, nice to be you. able to sign it in person <laughs> all right. together. Um, yeah. okay. So okay. our we have a meeting on Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, starting at five thirty. Five fifteen. Okay. Scheduled to be a one item. And to the, approve the library building project on contract. contract. That's Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. So it's just it's a very brief meeting on Tuesday, okay. and that's and the only the, item on the agenda. Um, the, uh, the second item is to approve the ARPA money for the wetlands delineation. Oh, okay. For lot 32. Okay. All right. So, uh, Kristen. So sorry to interrupt. If you are all through with acting chief uh, Sir Wonka, I think his attention's needed in uh, a possible mutual aid situation. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take one. Right. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thank Have you. a safe night. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. All right, so Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to make a mental note on the phone time for that. That's 515? Yes. Um, I just was wondering, could you ask John M for his last name for the minutes? John M, can you identify yourself? He might not be there. <laughs> no. no, he's there. He's there. John, who's that? Okay. I think it was John Montanari. Oh, okay. Right. These are all fine. Okay. All right. So Tuesday is the Tuesday. So how will the negotiations? Will they all happen just that day, the 16th? That's when they'll happen. Well, I'll put together a general contract. Yep. And make sure you guys are all okay with it. And I know there were a couple today.
suggestions of what has gone here and what's not. Um, but basically, it's just a straight okay, contract. And, yeah. uh, and once you guys look it over and get, then I'll share it with um, Lenny as well. So when he comes in, he can. Everyone's seen it. Okay. Everyone's seen it cool. ahead of the meeting. So hopefully, it'll be. Will that be an executive session for that? Um, not if we're not for the negotiation. Well, the select board needs to strategize and review it. So we'll have the executive session just for the select board to make yeah, sure yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. they can talk with each other that they've approved all the options to the contract and then go into the I'm sorry, what did I say that again? That you would draft the contract and then we go into executive session? Well, I would share it with the select board members individually. Get your, individually, get your feedback. And then once we get to a point where it seems like we have all the right elements in it, I would share with Lenny before that and, time. And then we would have an executive yeah. session with Lenny. So that's what I have to figure out if we can have it with Lenny. You can have it to strategize about. Negotiations. Oh, okay. But I believe the, the actual, usually that's why we do the one, one, and one. Because you can do it. Because we session. can do it privately okay. without an executive session. Okay. I mean, just because okay. nobody, you know, it doesn't have to be a posted meeting when you do one, one, and one. Okay. And that's why I suggest yeah. that you can also do it like one person would be, yeah. Or do one of the yeah. others. I don't know. I feel in this case, um that i would like to select forward all three of us yeah. to be a part of it all right yeah. um, so okay that's fine so just make sure we're close to agreement so before we go into them right okay. i think it'll work okay it should be. all right it should work. Um, before i forget really did you see reason we think she feels like she for about what she's doing yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> becky's been sit back and solve it okay cool yeah Okay, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Ms. O'Neill, aye. Dr. Aye. Carol, aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Um, okay, so Becky, can you use this? Oh, I almost took your phone. <laughs> oh, that's a good one for me to um, Yeah. So you want to stop recording? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Can you do you